Hi, this is Tim with After Later Audio, and today we are going to be discussing the Peaks module, um, more specifically the Dead Man's Catch alternate firmware that uh, comes installed on all of our different variations of the Peaks module. Um, if you're curious about what Peaks is and what these variations are, please see our video that addresses this specifically. This video will be centered around the Dead Man's Catch alternate firmware. <laughs> So what the Dead Man's Catch alternate firmware offers is alternate modes for each one of the different um, algorithms on the peaks. So you know you have the envelope, the LFO, the tap LFO, and the drum. Um, and this button here selects what mode you're in. So if you want to enter the alternate modes, just do a long press of that button. And now when you see a flashing light um, or a combination of flashing lights, you know you're in an alternate mode. Whatever LED is solid, um, meaning not blinking, is the alternate mode you're in. So we know we're in alternate envelope mode here. Another long press will bring us to alternate LFO and so on, and a short press brings us through the uh, basically the different algorithms which within each of the alternate modes. Um, each one has between three to five different um, types of whatever module you're in. Um, so why don't we just start with the envelopes? First up in the alternate envelope mode is the double attack envelope. So this actually turns an ADSR into an ADSAR. Uh, that second A also stands for attack. Um, and it behaves exactly like an ADSR envelope, except that an attack phase is repeated when the gate signal falls. That is, attack phases are triggered by both a rising and a falling gate signal. So if I just hit the trigger button really quick here, you'll see there on the oscilloscope a double attack. Now, if I hold it down, that second attack comes, that second attack phase comes after it's released. So you can send longer gates into the trig input to get that second attack. So here our controls are A, D, S, R, um, and the attack um, applies to both of the attacks for the gate on and the gate off attack phase. Um, in expert mode, you're going to get ADSR for both one and two. Um, you know, you'll just have to f change uh, pages to set those so you can have two totally different double attack envelopes. Or, of course, just in the normal mode here, um, you'll just have uh, two of the same shapes of envelope, but you can trigger them separately. So, in split mode, the double attack envelope function uh, actually implements a simple AD attack decay envelope, just as in the split mode of the basic envelope function. So, you get attack and decay from channel one, attack and decay from channel two. So, independent um, envelopes independently triggerable. They're almost the exact same as the original um, or the, just the basic envelope mode, except for. In the basic envelope function, the attack and decay curves of the AD envelope are quartic and exponential, respectively, but in the double attack envelope um, function in split mode, they, uh, they both the attack and decay phases of the AD envelopes have a linear shape. So that's some really nerdy details there if you wanted to know. On to the next alternate envelope. It is a repeating attack. So basically what that means, well here, I'll just show you. If I hit the uh, the trig button there, just a regular old ADSR envelope. However, if I hold it down, it repeats. So you can kind of turn it into an LFO as the uh, if the gate is high. And then of course it stops repeating after the gate goes low. So a little refresher, you can go into expert mode. Here we got one single um, blink of the split that means we're controlling the parameters of channel one short press double blink channel two so you can get these um these two different envelopes in in expert mode totally independent shapes um from each other and then in split mode here we have something very similar to the basic envelope function and the envelope um the the split mode of the the first alternate envelope um, and that is we just have two AD envelopes however here rather than uh, I talked about the quartic and the exponential and the linear and all that here we have um, they're just they're, it's quartic all the way around quartic I am not even sure what that means but if you want to go find out I, uh, I encourage you to do so 
So onto the third, now we have the looping envelope mode. Um, here in twin and expert modes, the looping envelope implements an ADR envelope in which the release phase immediately follows the decay phase um, as soon as the sustain level is reached. So there's no sustain plateau. The sustain control merely sets the level uh, at which the envelope transitions into the next phase. So. can see what I mean there. We're not really getting the plateau that you would in an ADSR. So as soon as the ADR cycle is complete, it automatically re-triggers itself, as you can see, and it'll just do that forever, regardless of whether the gate input is high or not. However, a rising gate or trigger signal will immediately reset the cycle back to the start of the attack phase, so you can like sync it with your clock. Watch if I just do a little tap here. Now I've got an in sync repeating envelope. So that's pretty useful. And so here in split mode, as you probably guessed, um, it's an AD envelope for channels one and two. It's the exact same as the previous um, mode, the, the repeating attack. However, um, this one just loops. Okay, so next up now we have the randomized AD envelope. So as you can imagine, that gives you two AD envelopes out of channels one and two. So uh, here, your parameter one is going to control your attack phase, and then parameter two will control your decay phase, and then parameters three and four are where the random comes in. So the third knob will be the amount of random variation in the envelope maximum amplitude, um, and then the fourth will be amount of random vari variation in the length of the decay phase. So with this all the way up, let's just send um, just a steady clock into this trig and watch. So the split mode here is actually the exact same as the uh, the basic envelope, so it's just two AD envelopes. The final alternate envelope mode is my personal favorite. It's the bouncing ball envelope mode. I'm sure a lot of you out there are familiar with the concept of a bouncing ball envelope, but if you're not, please direct your attention to the oscilloscope as I press the trigger button. In this mode, our our controls are going to be a little bit more high concept here. So parameter one is the gravity. So that increases, uh, increasing values reduce the acceleration due to gravity. So that twisting the knob clockwise simulates a bouncing ball on the moon or an asteroid and turning it counterclockwise simulates a bouncing ball on Kepler 452b. I'm reading from I'm reading from the uh, the manual here, but I think that's really funny. Um, I'm guessing that uh, Kepler 452b. If we were there, we would just get smushed by the gravity. But so here we go. Turn this down. See how tiny that is. Turn that all the way up. Parameter two then is the bounce energy loss. Um, so that means how much energy is dissipated um, each time the ball bounces. So we can see that happen here. Actually, let me turn this. Ooh. So obviously a low, we're not getting a lot of bounces, right? If we turn it down. However, we turn it all the way up. We're getting infinite bounces. And as we turn it down, it slows down. Uh, so the third is the initial amplitude. So that's the height from which the ball is thrown upwards. Um, so turning it to clockwise reduces the initial amplitude and then counterclockwise opposite. So let's go all the way counterclockwise here. See, nothing's happening because it's not going very high, right? And then if we go all the way up, So yeah, this is channel or uh, parameter three is how high you're throwing the ball. Ooh. And then finally, we have the initial velocity, um, and that's how hard the ball is thrown upwards. So let's check this out. So 
So in split split mode here, we have channel one is the initial velocity and gravity, and then um, this is the the bounce energy loss. So we'll just have still two bouncing ball envelopes, but just not as many parameters, obviously. Okay, that's the alternate envelope mode. <laughs> Now switching from alternate envelope mode to alternate LFO, we'll just do one long press. Now we are, we are in the alternate LFO. With the one blinking light there, that means that we are in the frequency modulated LFO or the folded sine FM. So it's identical to the original LFO uh, in that we have um, you know, a frequency here for the LFO and then we have our LFO shape so we can go from sine to triangle to square to um, a stepped triangle into a random noise that's all the same as the original um, but where it gets different is with knobs three and four you can add um, the the onboard sine wave modulator so this is the frequency of that sine wave modulator and then four is a depth control with um, zero or 12 being zero uh 12 o'clock that is and then as you fold as you uh turn it to the left you're actually increasing the depth of the sine wave modulator and then turning it to the right actually in, um, is the depth of a um a folded sine wave as a modulator so let's let's take a listen to what that sounds like just really quick here's without any of the onboard modulator uh, so this is just the sine wave LFO uh, manipulating the timbre of a knit. Now if we start introducing to the left here, this is the depth of that sine wave modulator that's going to be modulating the frequency. And then this is the, um, the frequency of the modulator that's modulating the output LFO's frequency. So that's just the regular sine wave modulator. Now if we go to the right, this becomes a depth control from uh, noon being zero all the way to the right of introducing a folded wave, a folded sine wave as the modulator. So these, uh, these parameters are the same in twin and expert mode. Uh, if you go into split mode, however, what happens is you now have two separate outputs um, where this is the base waveform frequency and this is the, uh, the wave shape, so that doesn't change. Um, however, whatever parameters you had set for the, um, the frequency of the modulator and whether it was the folded or the regular sign and the depth of that is carried over into the split mode. So you can get out of split mode if you want to do split mode and you can make your your adjustments go back into split mode and then there you have it so the next LFO mode is the uh, frequency mod modulated LFO just like the the previous one except for um, rather than a sign or a folded sign being the onboard modulator it is a uh, it's a random modulation so um, the the values the random values are periodically sampled at a rate set by the modulation frequency knob so this one uh, knob three um, and that value is used for the duration of the sampling cycle turning the modulation depth knob four counterclockwise from 12 o'clock causes increasing depth of frequency modulation with linear interpolation between random values while turning it clockwise from 12 o'clock um, increases the depth of random frequency modulation but with a smoother cosine interpolation between random modulation values did you get all that <laughs> basically we just have uh yeah a random a random modulator And the same goes for twin and expert and the split mode. Um, so a reminder, in split mode, your um, modulator frequency and depth 
carries over. So you can't actually change those parameters while in split mode, but if you want to change them, you can get out of split mode, apply them, and then go back in. So here in the third alternate LFO mode, the varying wave shape LFO uh, with folded sine wave modulation, um, we have something very similar to the first alternate LFO mode in that we have an onboard sine wave modulator that is modulating the LFO that's coming out of the module, except for in this mode, it's applied to the wave shape rather than the frequency. Um, and then another thing to note here is that our wave shapes in this mode are a little different than what they are in the, um, the other alternate modes that we were just in and the original. Um, so here we have a, uh, a folded sign, a power folded sign, an overdriven sign, a triangle or sawtooth, and then a square. And same controls as the other alternate mode. Here we have our frequency of the, um, the modulator. So let's go to this. It looks really good in the triangle mode here. And then um, at zero on the, four, on the fourth knob here, we have um, no depth for the modulation. As we turn to the left, we get just a standard sine wave modulator and the depth of that. And then to the right, we have a folded sine wave modulator. Um, so it's very similar to the, uh, the first alternate mode, except for it's just being applied to the, uh, the wave shape rather than the frequency of the LFO. So why don't we just take a listen to that. Again, the knit um, with the LFO going into the timbre control. So when you have it in the um, the square mode or the pulse here, you're um, you're you're modulating the um, the length basically. If you think of this as a gate, um, you're you're modulating the the length of that gate of the square wave. So you could get a cool um, repeating um, gate source out of it in the square. Mode. But as you can see, it's pretty pretty great um, modulator as well. So one thing to note that in split mode on the varying wave shape with the folded um, sine wave modulator, um, the split mode, you have your frequency and your wave shape, and then frequency of wave shape of output two. So one and two controls frequency and wave shape of output one, three and four control frequency and wave shape of output two. Um, and then whatever settings you had in twin or expert mode, um, as far as the modulator goes, are applied in split. Okay, so the final alternate LFO mode is the phase-locked loop oscillator. Um, so this is actually really fun. I, I like this one a lot. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to patch just the sine wave into the trigger input of the... Uh, I'm actually switching to the Rainier, as you'll notice, because I want to use some of these uh, modulation inputs. Um, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, but here, let's just get this, this, uh, filter self-resonating. So that's a normal sounding sine wave. Now let's introduce it to the, uh, phase locked loop oscillator. You notice it tracks pretty well there. What's very cool though. So here we have our frequency knob at the uh, at noon. We turn that down, we get ourselves a nice sub oscillator. We can actually take this out and only listen to the phase lock loop oscillator. Um, so knob two here changes the waveform. And then just like the previous uh, mode, we have um, modulation and the depth of that modulation. Let's 
plug this sine wave back in just for reference. Now let's bring in just an external triangle um, from the pendulum and uh, modulate this frequency. Let's just bring in a uh, nice just rising and falling uh, function generator. Let's bring that into the waveform. Input. So yeah, this is a really fun mode. You can get some pretty pretty wild sounds out of it. So just really quickly as a recap for the phase locked loop oscillator in twin and expert mode, we have the frequency divider or multiplier. Um, we have the LFO waveform, uh, the frequency of the internal um, wave shape modulator, and then the depth of that modulator. Um, and then in split mode, um, channel one is the sub oscillator, super oscillator frequency division multiplication. Um, and then this is the LFO wave, uh, wave shape. Um, and then obviously the same for this, and then the modulator um, parameters will just carry over to that split mode, um, just like in all of the other um, alternate LFO modes. So yeah, that's the alternate uh, LFO section of the uh, the peaks for Dead Man's Catch. Let's move on to the alternate tap mode. <laughs> Okay, on to the alternate tap mode. Um, the first one is a mini sequencer, and it is just what it sounds like. Um, it is a four-step sequencer. So let's get in uh, this uh, this filter self-oscillating again. Um, and then kind of hilariously in split mode, it becomes a dual two-step sequencer. <laughs> you never know when uh, that's going to be useful. So pretty self-explanatory, each knob basically just controls um, the output of the first, second, third, and fourth step. So the second alternate tap mode is the mod sequencer, and it's very similar to uh, the mini sequencer that we just looked at, but instead of being four steps, it's eight steps. Um, however, it's kind of funky in that steps five through eight are um, the polar opposite of steps one through four. So if, if um, say, uh, step one is at six volts, on a negative eight to positive eight uh, range, then the uh, the output of step five will be negative six volts. Or if step one is negative six volts, the output of step five will be positive six volts. So you can hear that, and this is a highly attenuated um, signal being sent into the cutoff of this resonating filter. <laughs> So you can hear it repeating a, the same sequence, but just one, one is way lower than the other. Um, if I don't attenuate the signal at all, it's pretty high, so it's almost unusable without some attenuation. I'm actually double attenuating it, because I'm using the output uh, attenuverter on Rainier, and also the, the input um, attenuverter on the popple. For the cutoff, so okay. So also in the alternate tap mode, we have uh, a Turing machine, which is really really fun. Um, if you're not familiar with the Turing machine, um, you should go check it out. I it's pretty pretty complicated, but basically it just it sends out um, random voltages uh, based off of probability within a shift register. Um, so what I'm going to do is just uh, put the output of this um, uh, Turing machine into the the knit here. It's wrong wrong cable here. Yeah. Um. 
So I've got all of the parameters set to zero right now, um, so nothing's going to happen. Um, I'm not going to start with knob one because it won't make sense. So let's start with knob two. Knob two sets the range of the output of the voltage. Um, knob one sets the, per the the probability. So here at zero, we just basically have um, a repeating four-step sequence. Uh, the third knob sets the length, so we can go up to an eight-step sequence, and all the way to the right, we can get um, a 32-step sequence. And if we turn up the probability all the way, actually, we can get up to like a 64-step sequence that doesn't repeat. Um, and then finally, we have a clock divider. So here I've just got the rise and fall. Um, actually, it's the, the rise, the end of rise trigger out from a tilt module. That's what's um, clocking the, um, the uh, Turing machine here. So if I have it really fast, here all the way down, it's a one-to-one, -one, and we can start dividing this clock. So that's a pretty cool uh, feature there. The final algorithm in the alternate tap mode is a uh, byte beats algorithm. It's pretty funky. Um, so you basically uh, get eight different byte beat equation oscillators. Um, so knob one kind of controls pitch. Um, and then um, knobs two and three do different things depending on what equation you're on. So. And this is where having these um, added CV ends with their attenuators makes this one way more, way more fun to play with. So there you can see having the uh, the external CV control. It's very, very fun with this particular uh, algorithm. All right, moving on to alternate drum mode. The first alternate drum algorithm is the FM drum generator. Um, so it's pretty self-explanatory. We've got pitch. We have like an attack here, a release, or a decay, and then we have, we have some noise. And then once again, this is where it gets really fun to uh, add some frequency modulation into all of the different uh, all the different um, parameters here. Oh, I gotta flip, gotta flip one upside down here.
Okay, the next uh, drum algorithm in the alternate drum mode is the randomized bass and snare drum generators. Um, there are versions of the bass and snare drum uh, models from the original peaks. Uh, however, you can add some random um, control in the pitch and the amplitude. So um, channel one is the bass, uh, channel two is the snare, and basically um, the first knob controls the uh, the frequency of the bass and snare and then this will um, add some snap to the snare and then add some uh, longer decay to the the bass drum so let's just get a simple drum beat going so that'll just repeat like this forever um, however we can start introducing some random here. So all the way to the left is, is no random. Um, and then you can just, so halfway up, I'm introducing a little bit of random to the pitch. And then on knob four, I can start introducing, um, I can make the, uh, the amplitude of the output of each one of the drum hits random. So the knobs um, one and two are the same for um, twin expert and split mode. I think the only difference here in split mode is you don't have control over the random, um, but the random will still be applied. So whatever settings you have in twin or expert mode will be carried over to split mode. So if you get to split mode and you don't like what's happening with the random, just go back to twin or expert mode, whichever one you were using um, to set things up and uh, get your settings dialed in the way you want them and then go back into split. The final uh, algorithm in the alternate drum mode is the alternate um, or the random, the randomized hi-hats. Um, and it's cool that they added this because for some reason in the Dead Man's Catch firmware, um, if you have it in the original mode, just the original drum mode, um, you can't turn that snare drum all, um, up to a hi hat. Like in uh, in the regular firmware, you could you could turn the snare drum into a hi hat. So here you get um, a pair of hi hats, which is really cool. And um, basically, what you have um, is your pitch your decay and then you can introduce randomized control to the pitch and then introduce a uh, randomized control to the decay again in the uh, the split mode the randomized cannot be controlled, um, so you have to set the random um, controls in twin or expert mode, and then they will carry over to split mode.